Hello everybody and welcome to a new lesson of Learn Old Egyptian. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to try to read hieroglyphic expressions with all the things that we've learned before. So let's start together with our first word. So for the first word that we have at hand, uh, we divide it in two uh, distinctive expressions uh, so that we can read it easier. Uh, the first half is something we've seen already. This half circle here is called neb and t, all together, nebet, nebet. Second part starts with b, t, pet. So nebet, pet. Nebet, pet means mistress, mistress for nebet, of the sky. Pet is the sky. So sometimes in Egyptian, we don't need a proposition of. Uh, you put simply two words together, nebet. So basically, you read it, mistress, sky. And you translate it, mistress of the sky. So before our uh, second word, I would like to make a little comment about plurals. So the way we write plurals is that we use three strikes that we write at the end of the word after the determinative, if it, if it exists. So basically, you're going to see three strikes and they can be um, aligned in different fashions. But when you see three strikes, it means that whatever word you have to read, you need to add a sound u at the end because it's a plural. So this here is a senu. So you read it, senu. So our next expression is divided in two words. The first is a flag, and this flag here is a sacred word. It's the word necher. And because necher is a sacred word, we put it in the beginning of the sentence, even if we're not going to read it first. So we start with the second part here, and this here is hot. Hot. So hot here means enclosure. So this is in the shape of an enclosure. So basically, you read it hot, and this is a determinative. So this is an, an enclosure. This is T for feminine uh, word. And this is a determinative that you don't read. Because we have three strokes here, we consider that this is a plural. So instead of reading it hot, we are going to read it hot. Hot. Because it's a plural. So hot nature. Nature. Hot nature. It means enclosures of the gods. It's an expression that means temples, basically. It's enclosures of the gods means temples. Third expression that we are going to read is divided in three parts. So that's going to help us read. So three words. The first word is set. Set means place. This is a determinative for places. So set. Net. Net is the expression of, place, of. This symbol here is a very famous Egyptian hieroglyph. It's the Anch uh, symbol. It means life. Anch, so you see Anch here is a, a triliteral uh, sign. Then you have N and Ha sound for confirmation. Then we have three strokes. And because we have three strokes, it means we have to read it as a plural. So, anhu, anhu. Set, net, anhu. And set, net, anhu means place of the living. Our fourth expression, we're going to divide it in readable words. So, we have three words to read. The first one starts with a mouth, R, M, REM. Then we have three strokes. It means this is a plural word. It means remo. Remo is plural of fish. Basically, you have the determinative that suggests that we're talking about a fish. Second word is ha n a. Hanna. Hanna is the equivalent of end in English. Third word. A, 
pe de. Then three strokes, it means it's a plural. A pe du. A pe du is birds. And you have a determinative that suggests that we're talking about birds. We are talking about remu, hana, a pe du, fish, and bird. Nebet, pet, mistress of the sky. Hawut, nature, temples. Set, net, and hovu, place of the living. Remu, hana, apedu, fish, and birds. So that's basically it for today, and we're gonna try to do more of these exercises in the future. See you soon.